So this week's video, unfortunately, we actually ran out of time to sail um, because we are doing the bilge pump on the boat and it's so important to get the bilge pump fitted you know we've we've you know we've been very lucky with the weather so far but if we get any rough weather here and if especially if you want to go on the sea we've got to have a bilge pump so this video might be a skip for some of you but for those of you that actually want to see someone with absolutely no experience of bilge pumps fit one to a Drascom lugger uh, and actually what we do is we fit it under the hull uh, and have a through hull fitting and um, if, if that turns any of you on then strap in because this is the video for you today it's going to be all about bilge pumps <laughs> or mostly about bilge pumps anyway um, we've got Lulu here and the time has come to take the plunge and get this new bilge pump fitted because it's going to severely hamper what we can and can't do if we can't empty her of water so today we're going to get this bilge pump done hopefully um, it's perfect conditions to do it look there's no wind at all this morning so without further ado let's get on and do it the well, first thing we're going to do with this bilge pump is get all the bits out and then we're going to try and work out where all these bits are going to go how they're going to fit so here we are this is everything here the first thing we've got is an outlet valve so this is actually going to need to go in the hull of the boat and it's going to need to go somewhere around here. The next thing is, is well, I think this is just the bilge pump diaphragm kit. I don't know if it's got it built in or whether you have to fit that um, before you put the bilge pump in. We'll find out. This is the bilge pump itself. Now this, hopefully you can see just alter that a little bit you might not be able to see in here but this is going to go in here and be fixed under here now i don't think let's just have a quick feel we're going to fix it without a backing plate and we're going to see how it works you know it's not super thick i'd say it's no more than five mil thick if we need a backing plate we'll make a backing plate and we'll get that done but this bilge pump is going to be underneath this is the piece that would be on the top so that's going to be under the deck and this will be what hides it so this will actually sit let's bring the camera back up here this will sit flush you know and the thing we've got to consider here is where we're going to sit um can we reach it so you have to remember if it's on one side which it's going to have to be then you know we you know if we're on the uh starboard tack then can we you know we won't be able to reach this you know what happens if we need to reach it so you know does it need to be here it needs to be here you know does it need to be tilted around like this i guess that will be dictated to by this but one thing we do have to consider is that the the uh, final bit of the bilge pump is you know if it's too close we don't want it hitting this if it's this way then yeah we've got good movement any way we want but then that might be awkward reaching it so we want to do like that so we've got loads of things to consider and the last thing is the pipe. So this pipe needs to run along here to wherever it needs to go. It needs to come in here, through here. Actually, I'll show you with this smaller piece. You know, we need it to be sort of, you know, tucked away if possible, and then only come up here. So I'm not sure how we're gonna do that. We might need to make some brackets. I don't know. It's not very flexible, this stuff. The final thing I need to do is just make sure, yeah, this actually fits. So it does, we need some clamps to clamp that on. 
and that side yeah it's quite a loose fit to be frank so you might need a little bit of silicon in there and then this as well here yeah that's much better so it's going to be a long and laborious job um and we're going to have to take the plunge now and cut some holes in the boat which is always a disconcerting thing to have to do so i've got the dremel um i've got a whole range of uh bits for the gem dremel and these are sort of rotary tool or uh some people call them plunger bits um they're like what you use to create edges and bigger holes and sort of shapes in wood and, and metal and whatnot now some of these we can use to create a hole um, and this one actually here, this is actually like a carving bit, like a CNC rooting bit. So it's designed to cut sideways, not just in and out. Um, I've also got these. These are really good. Um, you can see they're like just metal bits. They're brilliant for putting holes in things and making holes a little bit bigger. Whether they'll work for fiberglass, I'm not sure. If they're too tough, I've got this which is like a sanding it's really a sharpening or sanding bit just made out of stone and that might be what we do so i think the theory will be we do a series of holes to make the shape and we try and cut those out from the side and that would be using just a normal drill bit or metal probably a, a decent metal drill bit which i've got here to just make a, a nice hole so we're in the uh, oops, uh, we're in the rear quarter of the boat, and this is the bulkhead. It's actually only got one piece here we need to worry about to cut through. So as long as we're under here, that's okay. So we've got plenty of room here, and it's one skin. This side as well is one skin, so it's a little bit tighter here. So we're going to have to keep it as close to this hole as we can. Um, I just need to get a mark out where the hole goes um, and then we can start to drill. And the good news is I can do it both from inside here um, and as long as we yeah keep that nice and honest we should be fine. So there's a little ring of holes done. The next job will be to use a Dremel. I'm gonna first try this bit, this little carving bit, make, see if that one works. So let's put that one in. Go. Okay, and let's see if we can now join these up with this carving bit. There we go. Gosh, that cut through it like butter. There we go. So we need a little bit of tidying up. So we've now got a little sanding piece on just to make this a little bit honest. I didn't realize how easy fiberglass was to cut through actually. I'll need a little bit of sanding there, but there are no sharp edges. Now, let's see if the pipe will fit. And here's the pipe. There we go. And that's probably about the size of the hole I wanted. And when we get it seated, we'll seal it up with silicon. That's actually good because it will give me a little bit of give. You can see how it's got to bend around here. Yeah, I think we've got. Yeah, you know what? I think we've got more than enough given that. And then when we get it connected in this side, this will straighten this part of the pipe up. So that's one side done. Let's do the other. So we've got two nice holes, one there and one there. And we're about to thread the piping through it now. So let's try and get that. Yeah. 
Uh, make sure we get the right ends. So I think what we can do is thread it through here, like this. There we go. A little bit big that one. And thread it through there. And then this side, if we just thread it through, I really need to get rid of some of the stuff that's in here, but here in the lazarette, let's just thread that all the way through. God, there's so much gunk in my bilge, mostly leaves and moss. So let's keep threading it all the way through. And then the idea is, idea is this will go all the way up here like this about there so you can see this will be the level of the floorboards so this will be all completely hidden and then hopefully you can see under there is where the end will be so you can see that we probably need let me just try and get down here we probably need something that will hold the pipe honest, like this. It may settle, but it may need to just... Oh, it's settling already a little bit, but we may need something that will just help to hold it down. So we might have to build a little, I don't know, stick something down that will hold that pipe down honest like that. But I don't think we'll need much down this end here. I think this will sit on its own. Oh, I got my little pad for my knees. Let's just do that the other way around. So, oh, that's much better. So, this pipe now has got to come. To be honest with you, as long as it was on the floor here, I think we'd be fine. But if we can get it to, yeah, it'll go there, I think quite nicely. So if we can get it to maybe come here, through here, and then up, you can see to the, to the bilge pump, which will be somewhere here. And then I think we've got a little bit of play in the length of the pipe. Uh, and where that pipe can go. But that's the general idea. So the next job is to get this bilge pump in the right place. So we've just paddled <laughs> up to this mooring and this is this uh, newer lugger. I think it's a 2006 this lugger. The reason I've come here is it's a friend's boat. So I know the guy that owns the boat. So we're not doing anything spectacular, but we're going to have a little look at where his bilge pump is. The first thing I'll show you is you may just be able to make it out there. There is the outlet hole and that doesn't have a valve in it. So it's there and it's literally the same height as the scupper is. Can you see his scupper sort of down there? So that's the first thing we've noted. The next thing we need to just note, if we just remove that is where is, and there it is. So, ah, it's quite, it's actually quite close in and it is at an angle. Can you see that? We just uh, try and do that for the light. So I'm going to try and measure that up now. So we've got a much better idea of where things need to be. So um, that's, that was really interesting. I'm really glad I went and had a look at that other looker over there. Um, so if I just tilt this down, um, basically this corner here was 22 centimeters from this point, oh no, from the edge here. So if we do 22, and we just mark that with a Sharpie, and it was, there you go, to that. So this cleat is actually in the way, it would need to be a, to there, and then we'll just mark that off as 31, which it is. The, the Mark II looker may be a slightly different shape to the Mark III, I don't know. There might be something different here. But that point there was there. So I think as long as, let's just check there's a thing there, yeah. So I think as long as we're within this region, 
and we have this pump like that, I think we're going to be okay. So as long as I've kept that mark there, I think we're going to be all right with that. So the next job really is to double check where the bilge pump's going to go and whether we can get the pipe to fit uh, without you know any kinking and stuff like that. So it's going to be quite difficult. So you can see the bilge pump has got an arrow. So that indicates the water has to go that way. So it's going to be sucking the water from the, the main pipe here and this will be the exhaust this way. And just to double check that, you can just blow and then you can suck and nothing will happen. So that's going to be from the main pipe that's coming from the front of the boat. I think the other thing we need to check is just making sure what let what amount of travel this has and you can see it's not actually that much so as long as we've got enough room for that to move and not to be in the way of anything and i think having it like at this angle is good to grab from the other tack so yeah i think we can actually I think one of the reasons it's been put so close in here, if you look there, sorry, is that the boat significantly curves this way. So the more we put it in here, the less room we have to operate it. But I think it will go, you know, I think we can put it, probably put it about here. I mean, this is where the other boat's got it. But I think we can tuck it away a little bit more than that and put it there. So we would have, I mean, it would be the wrong way. We would have it sort of there. So I'm just gonna make a few little notes. Hopefully this Sharpie will, will come off. So if I just put the, the corner here, just mark that corner off there and there. I don't see why we wouldn't have it there. Now I'm gonna check it from under. So I've just been looking at the instructions and these can come off and you can rotate them through 90 degrees. So that's how it came. So it's kind of straight, if you can see. So I think if we rotate it and put it at that angle, the pipe will come up and meet it a lot better. So I'm gonna try that and let's see if it fits better. Yeah, so as you can see, let's put this camera up a bit. As you can see, if we have the pump, so the inlet is actually underneath, what will happen is, uh, I'm hoping you can see this, the pipe, I think, look, will naturally, it'll almost take a bend out, because before we had to sort of bend the pipe that way to get it into there. But I think if we do it upright like that, it's going to fit really well. So I think we've decided on where this needs to be. We've just got to be careful. We've got enough. Let's just come back up here. We've got enough clearance for this. So once this is down here, yeah, I think we're okay. We've got enough clearance. The last thing we want is that hitting the deck. So I think the next job will be to put the screw holes in. So let's do that. So. I've used this as a template and I've managed to position this in the right place. It's a little bit set back as you can see. Marked off the four holes that will be the brackets that will mount this on here. And then this hole in the middle has to be 86 centimeters. So the flange will fit. So yeah, we just, I've done it as best as I can. I don't have anything of that of that size or near to that size uh there's no nothing template wise i'm just going to check in here if there's anything no because this is all goes into german and french double check that's a six millimeter metal drill bit it seems to be the order of the day and moment of truth There we go, no going back now. So these are the bolts. Let's check, uh, one, two, three. I don't wanna get lose these other screws, four. I assume those go through. 
Whoa. actually they go through here so we'll fit these now and we'll double check everything works we don't have to fit all of them actually let's just fit two because before we move on we might want to just double check that the everything's seated properly we'll take this out and we shall drill this hole out we may as well use what we've got here Let's try and cut this out as accurately as we can. Definitely no going back now. There we go, it's nice and smooth, we don't want to damage it. So this should just squeeze through and sit in there. There we go, perfect. Oh, brilliant. It fits really nicely. Now, whether that goes that way, or I think it goes this way, this then goes over the top like this. Hmm. I think that would push through there. Or does that go like this? Ah, and that sits on the top. Yeah. But this has got to then fit around here. Like, let me just bring this around. So this has got to fit onto here, I assume. So let's push that on there. Make sure we get it the right way. So that looks okay. Let's just push to see what that looks like. Hmm, does it go that way, do you think? Let's try it this way. I'll just try it on the other way around, just see what it looks like. Oh yeah, no, it totally deforms that way. So yeah, it goes on this way. There we go. And then, let's just try and get that central. So hopefully it'll just stay there. Then that, we can now just, let's go back over here. This will just pinch through like this. go like that I might even just hold it there this goes on the top now let's get this if we get these rear screws in it we seem to be able to locate them easier so oh let's move that where did the bilge pump go There we go. There we go. There's, oh, there's two in now. Right. And then there's the... Perfect. That's perfect. A little bit wibbly wobbly here. I think we're on the, the lower end of the limit. But I think once that's secured in there, yeah, we might need a little backing plate, but we can worry about that another time. So I'm glad about that, that's looking good. So the next job is to get this tube connected into here, which is the inlet of the um, bilge pump. And we're gonna sort of roughly, that's gonna come like that. And then its own force will keep the tube on its here. Let's see if I can get it a little bit further tucked in. 
but I'm gonna have to do this on off camera because it's just too difficult to do with one hand but you see what I'm trying to do I'm gonna do it <laughs> and then we'll see the finished product so there's a the tube cut to length and then that should be enough for the outlet let's fit this onto the bilge pump now there we are there's a the tube going up there i've jubilee clipped it onto here it's quite a good fit that and then we've got enough slack so we can feed a little bit in and get that nicely around there but i think we're as long as we can keep it under there we've got plenty of room it may actually create a little brace for something to go there as well so i'm really pleased with that really pleased so i'm just using a three mil metal drill bit and we're just going to put a little hole in here and when i do it you might hear some air release let's just see let's just firstly let's just double check so we're going to sit it there i'm going to do it on the bottom there did you hear that i don't know if you heard that Just gonna have a series of these. This is like a makeshift strum box, really. So we'll just put a few in for now. That'll do. So now we can give it a test, and you should hear it working. Awesome, so that's brilliant, that is really good. So we've got to turn our attention to the final job, which is the, the external valve or whatever this is. <laughs> sort of seacock, isn't it, in a way? And, uh, and then we've finished. So the first thing we've got to do is position this. So we've got to imagine that is sort of, I don't know if you can even see this, but let's just do it on the floor. You've got to imagine that's going to be the other side of the hull and this bolts down here so it does come out quite a bit um, all we've got to do is make sure that the the pipe can run from that to the one the x the exhale pipe of the bilge pump you know quite easy and nicely and that's all we've got to do and then we've got to drill a hole for this and that's it job done so i think this is about right any further down i think we're gonna to be too far away uh about here just before this little bulkhead here and this little hook there, I could see the screws that come through. I think that's going to be the right place. So we've just got to now find how far down it needs to go. Let me get my pen and let's walk into the water. So this is scary for two reasons. One, we're drilling a hole in my hole. And two, we don't want to drop the uh, drill in the water. So I've marked out the hole there now using the washer. Um, we're gonna use the same method because it's about 30, 32 mil. Oh. <laughs> Sorry about that. There was a couple of the guys that own the other luggers here that just came down to say hello. So uh, nice, always nice to see everyone. And you always end up chatting so much here. Um, it is a really friendly place. Um, everyone chats to everyone and it is really great um trouble is you don't get anything done <laughs> so anyway they've gone uh back to the hole so you can see i've got my hole marked out there the larger one and actually i did it in the end that's the washer that goes around the uh the plastic part this part so this should be the right right size we're gonna use the same method as before being very careful and I shall show you when I'm finished. There we go, one hole, all sanded off. I just caught that. All that will there you go. Yeah, it's just it's almost rubbed out that. But that's uh, quite frightening, really. But we've got one hole in the hull of the boat. I didn't do too much mess. There's a little bit of fiberglass on the water. I just I got I couldn't really do much about that. Um, but it's only a tiny amount, so. I think it'll be okay. So now we're going to put this nice washer on there. Push this through. There we go. And that's fit really nice. We've just now got to put the, the nut on, which is this one. 
on the other side and I think that little grey washer should be enough to stop water getting in. If we find water is getting in we'll have to address it, we'll have to put like a little rubber washer or something in there. But uh, let's get this nut on and let's get the pipe on and then we're done, which is amazing. So there she is, there's the valve in, or the outlet valve or whatever you call it, seacock, something like that. And now all we've got to do is join those two pieces up with a tube. It is a little bit uphill, but there's not much we could do. I couldn't put it any lower, that seacock. If it was any lower, it's, it would just be too low. So, you know, I've done my best with that. Right, there we go. So, there's a the bilge pump. There is the exhaust pipe all done. I hope you can see that. And then here's the inlet pipe. If we come back out the boat, which goes all the way down there. We just got to sort that out. Just get that underneath, but it's roughly the right length. Be fine for a little test. Here are the holes, one there, one there, which we can fill up with silicon. And then here's the handle, and you can hear it. Suck, push, suck, push. So that works brilliantly. And then the last job we've got to do is to put the little brackets for the for the um the little handle. So I'm actually just gonna put them here. I think that'll be well out the way of the uh main sheet. And the reason I'm putting them in the wood is that they are easy to move. If I need to move them, it's not the end of the world. If you put holes in the uh, fiberglass, then it's a bit of a problem. So we're just gonna get those in. Got a little screw, in you go. There we go. And that is one bilge pump done. Let's just tidy up some of the fiberglass inside. We'll get that swept up and then we'll fill the boat up with water and give it a test. I can't wait actually. This goes to show how much water one of these buckets will fill. Oh yeah, look at that go. So what would be good to do... Oh yeah, that really does. To give you an idea, let's just go and get the... Uh, go and get this. I don't know if you can see this, but let's see how much one... Gosh, thing will fill. Easily one of these, easily one of those. Yeah, there's, there was loads of stuff blocking these holes. I think we need way more holes. So I'm going to put much more, I'm going to put, I'm going to double the holes, maybe up to here, maybe do an extra row. Uh, it won't take me two minutes. And I'm going to, then we'll try again. Right, I put literally double the amount of holes in there. So let's see how it feels now. Oh yeah, 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 there's definitely more water coming through. Yeah, there's definitely more water coming through. There's a lot of debris in the bottom of the boat. So there you go, you can see we're almost dry here. And then there's a minimum amount here. I mean, you know, an inch of water in the bottom of the bilge is just normal. <laughs> the only time you might want to get rid of that is if you were going to sleep on the boat for a couple of nights. You might just want to get rid of the water underneath. Could make it a bit moist and damp. But there's so little water there that with the sponge, that's what you would have a really nice big sponge for. It would just get rid of that last little remaining bit. Um, so I'm really, really pleased with this. So brilliant that the bilge pump is fitted. 
probably the biggest job I've done so far on a boat, you know, drilling all these holes in the hull. But uh, I can't say I'm not very, I'm, I'm massively pleased about that. So 